Welcome back. I hope you are able to successfully set up your practice meeting room. Now in part two, I'll show you the interface for Adobe Connect and how you can host your meeting, webinar, or story circle. Since each story circle will have from three to five students, I'd like to see each one of you take a turn at hosting a, a story circle so that you'll gain this valuable experience. And since we only have three story circles and there may be more than three in a story circle, you might try co-hosting one with another member of the circle so that everybody gets this experience. There can be two hosts in the meeting, but one of the hosts actually sets up the meeting. And that's what I showed you how to do in part one of the tutorial. Okay, by way of a short review, I want to tell you to go to webconference.syr.edu as your first step. That will take you to this screen, your login screen for Adobe Connect Pro. Type in your login using the SU Net ID and password. Since I've already set up the meeting, I can now just click on in to it and get right there. If you see this white screen, just look behind it as the, the room is loading. I'm assuming that you're wearing headsets with a microphone and that you check the audio preferences on your computer to make sure your audio or sound input and output is set to your headset as opposed to the built-in audio device. Here we are. When you get into the meeting room, the first thing I want you to do is use the audio setup wizard to test your audio because without good audio, you won't be able to do much in the webinar or story circle. So to set up audio, go to the meeting menu. It has a drop down and then click on audio setup wizard, which will take you through step by step of setting up your audio. Now I've already gone through this to set my audio up. So that's as far as I'll go. I'll just cancel out. But make sure you do that first thing. Now that the audio is set up, let's take a look at what else you can do from the meeting drop down menu. You can also set your preferences for Adobe Connect here. For example, the default background is gray. I could upload another background if I wanted but I'll just leave it set to the default. From this menu button, you can also record the meeting or event, which you might find useful for practicing. From here, you can also end the meeting or completely exit from Adobe Connect. Let's look at the next one, the Layouts drop-down menu. On this, you can play around with the way the room is organized. Each one of the areas on your screen is a separate pod. And as you can see, the layout that I'm in now is the sharing layout. In this layout, there are generally four pods open at any time. The large share my screen pod, which I'll show you more of in a moment. The webcam pod in the upper right, which I have not yet enabled. The attendees pod, so you can see everybody participating. And the chat pod where participants or the host can type in comments or questions. Now back to the large pod that's dedicated to sharing. You can share different things. You can share your desktop screen. Uh, you can uh, share a document like a PDF or a PowerPoint, or you can share a whiteboard. I'll show you each one. To share your desktop, click on sharing. A dialog box opens and asks what you want to share. To share what's on your desktop, which might be a video clip or an application, select that. Below here, it knows that I have a dual-headed system, meaning I have two monitors. And I only want to show what's on my main mon monitor, so I'll select that and not the second display. When you click Share, the interface may seem to disappear, but it hasn't. Fear not, you have not lost your Adobe Connect connection your participants still see the interface. If you're on a Windows system, an Adobe Connect icon appears in your system tray. And if you're on a Mac like I am, it's in 
that's on your toolbar. When you're finished sharing, you simply click on the icon in the tray or in the toolbar and you'll go back to the interface that everybody else is seeing. Now you can hit stop sharing and you can share something else. If you want to share a document, click on share document. You can browse your computer and upload documents. This takes up time, so I recommend that you upload any documents you want to share ahead of time, that is, before participants arrive. As you can see, I've already done that. I've, updated two, I've uploaded two PDF documents and a PowerPoint slide. I'll choose the PowerPoint just to show you how it looks. Now it takes a little time to load, even though I've already preloaded. Here it is. I created a slide with some tips for you. Now these tips include things like make sure you do the audio setup wizard and make sure everybody else is wearing their headsets and their mics and to practice, practice, test, do trials and so forth. So that's enough of that. When you're done, click on Stop Sharing. As an aside, there's also a handy pointer next to the Stop Sharing button if you want to drag it down into the sharing area to highlight something. I've shown you how to share your desktop and share a document, such as a PDF or PowerPoint. You can also bring up a whiteboard, which is handy if you want to have a brainstorming session. Your controls are on the upper left here. If you choose the text function, you can type in something right on the whiteboard. You might want to choose a larger font before you actually start typing. And when you're finished with that screen, just click on Stop Sharing. Now another layout you could choose is the discussion layout. In this layout, you now have a pod to add discussion notes. In the large area, you no longer have the sharing pod. Instead, you have a large area to project your webcam and those of other participants whose webcams are enabled. I like this layout for story circles because you can see everyone clearly. Let's try it out. First, I have to click Start my webcam. I'm here, <laughs> but my mouse is standing in for me because it's early and I'm not camera ready yet. Right now, as the host, your participants still can't see you because you're only in preview. To go live, click on Start Sharing. You will then be sharing this area with other participants whose webcams are also enabled. Now the video frame size will scale down depending on how many of you are in the meeting. Now I'll show you the collaboration layout. It looks quite a bit like the sharing layout. If you were collaborating, you want to share some files perhaps. So a files pod is added so anybody can upload files, not just the host. These are all the basic layouts but you can always add pods to customize your layout if you wish. For example, under the pods menu, you could add a poll to gather some data. This is really great for webinars in, in which you might have 100 participants or so. In such cases, it might be unlikely that you would have participant webcams enabled. Craziness. Uh, your participants would likely be asking questions using the chat pod or a Q&A pod. But let's create a poll so you can see how easy it is. Go to Poll, Add New Poll. A window opens and lets you create a multiple choice question. You could use it for a yes, no, or a true, false question too. Then type in your question. I'm going to just put in, are you now confident about conducting a webinar? <laughs> Below, you would type in your response choices. And I've got a few of them I'm just going to paste in here. 
Then click on Open, and you'll see that it's all set up for you. Now I'll type in a response. There you go. To let all the participants see, you'll have to select Broadcast Results. When you're ready to move on, just open the drop-down menu and select Hide, and it disappears. Let's move over to the Audio Menu button. If you want your participants to speak, you'll need to select Microphone Rights for Participants. Next to the main menu, as the host, you'll see four icons. The first one is the speaker icon. You can mute your speakers and you can adjust the speaker volume here. The next icon over is the microphone. Right now it's gray, which means it's disconnected. I hit the drop down arrow and then simply select connect. When you're connected, it turns green. And you can see when I talk that sound waves are represented. Now what I'm going to tell you next is it's really important for good audio. It's really easy with everybody using headsets and microphones to get overlapping echoey audio. Horrible. And to prevent that, and this goes for participants as well as hosts, when somebody else is speaking, be courteous and mute your microphone. When you select that option, your microphone is still green note, which means it's still connected. But there's a line crossing through it, indicating that it's muted at the moment. When it's your turn to talk again, you unmute your microphone by clicking on it. We're almost done, so hang in there for another minute or two. The next icon over is the webcam icon. I already turned on my webcam earlier when I was showing you the collaboration layout. From here, I can also enable my webcam or turn it off. This icon is also important because you use it to enable the webcams of your participants as well. The last icon up here is the set status icon. You can use it to do any of these things, like raise your hand. I'm going to do this. But look over at the attendees pod to where my name is and when I click on raise hand you'll see that it appears next to my name. So that means if a participant raises their hand you can see it and acknowledge them. There's also a green and a red check. These are really helpful. For example, before you begin speaking you can ask participants to go to this drop down set status menu bar. And then you can say to them something like, if you can hear me, please give me a green check. You'll know if, they're, if you're having any audio problems or if everybody can hear you. Then you can clear your status at the bottom of the drop-down menu. I've got one last tip. Looking over at the attendees pod, there are three levels of rights access in the Adobe Connect system. That's host, presenter, and participant. You have the most rights as a host. A participant has the least. A presenter can do more, like advanced slides on a PowerPoint presentation as they're giving, uh, that they're giving and so forth. For small meetings or story circles, you as a host can promote participants to presenters if you want, giving them more privileges. All you do is mouse over their name, and select Make Presenter. When you invite persons to attend your session, they automatically come in as participants. So you'll have to promote them if you want to do that. I'm going to end this tutorial with a one question quiz to see if you have been paying attention. I'm going to give you something to troubleshoot as the host and see if you can figure it out. Let's say you're getting messages in the chat window that indicate that some participants' webcams are not showing up, or that maybe none of them are showing up. They're kind of getting frustrated. What do you do? I'll give you three seconds of wait time to process. Okay. Now, if the webcam issue 
is not on the participant side, it's likely that you need to enable their webcams. So go to the webcam icon and select Enable Participants Webcam. I hope this tutorial has been helpful to you. It'll take a little practice to do this, so please take the time and practice and you'll get it and really this will be such a wonderful tool to have at your command. Thank you.